I want to talk about MSG, monosodium glutamate, versus glutamate. Because sometimes you hear glutamate and you think, wow, is that going to turn into MSG? Is that bad? I've done videos on talking about cancer consuming glutamate. Uh, glutamate is an amino acid. Cancer can live on glucose or glutamate. Glutamate doesn't cause cancer, but if you have cancer, cancer cells could live on glutamate. This is why we recommend intermittent fasting for those people that have cancer. But if you don't have cancer, you don't have to worry about it simply because every single food that you eat has glutamate. Okay, It's an amino acid, like I said, and the body actually has about 4.4 pounds of glutamate that makes up its tissue. So it's part of our food supply, it's part of our body. Now, in 1909, there was a patent on MSG and they call it Accent. They still sell it now and it's a flavor enhancer. And basically the problem with MSG is that it tricks your taste buds in making the food taste better than it really is. And it gives you that savory sensation. I remember living in San Diego with my wife, Karen. This is before we were into nutrition or we knew anything about nutrition. We would go to this restaurant and we would love to consume this hot and sour soup. Okay, it was loaded with MSG. It tastes so good, but after we would consume it, I noticed my hands would be so swollen and puffy. I had so much fluid retention because you're talking about monosodium glutamate. And then I noticed my blood sugars kind of crash after as well. And then about an hour later, I was starving for more of it. So the problem with MSG is it can raise your insulin levels and push down your blood sugars, give you like more of a hypoglycemic uh, reaction. And then now you're hungry for more food. And plus it has a lot of other side effects, which I'll get into. So let me just differentiate between MSG and glutamate. All right, so right here, we have something called L-glutamic acid. Now, when I'm talking about glutamic acid, I'm really talking about glutamate because one will turn into the other, okay? So don't get hung up on the terminology, but L-glutamic acid is the natural form of glutamate found in foods. And D-glutamic acid is artificially made. And I want to talk about the difference between these two. This is MSG, okay? So when you have the D before it, that means it's MSG. When it has the L, it's not MSG. So it's not going to create a reaction. Now, what's so unique about D-glutamic acid is it's unbound versus the L version is bound to a protein. So when you consume food with this glutamate, it's always bound with protein. Now, if you're consuming just pure fat, for example, you're not gonna have glutamate. And that's why when I said almost every food contains glutamate, I said almost, okay? Fats don't contain glutamate. So we have this version, which is bound to a protein, and this version that's unbound. And what this means is when you digest the food, this is much slower going into your body. This is super fast. It's gonna spike the amount of uh, glutamate by eight to 10 times in your blood when you consume this because it goes in like a rocket ship. But this is slower and our body regulates how much it wants, okay? So it can shut off any excess amounts. This, we're just shoving it into the blood large amounts and it can create a problem. This version is artificially made and maybe you've seen this in some of the ingredients, hydrolyzed, okay? That basically makes this protein unbound, okay? So it breaks it up so it's free, it can go in your body. Or autolyzed, which is another term to describe how it's broken down into a smaller particle, or modified. So simply, this is free unbound glutamate, and this is bound glutamate, okay? Now here's the problem. When you go to the grocery store, there are so many products that have MSG that are not on the label. That is the problem. Um, especially if it's listed as a processing aid, they don't have to put it in the label. Here are some of the symptoms that people have when they're exposed to MSG. Hives, rashes, they become irritable, forgetfulness with simple words, mood swings, which describe maybe some of your friends and family members, achy joints, pain, headaches, and the list goes on and on and on. Now here are some of the names in the ingredients that potentially could have MSG. Natural flavorings, flavorings, 
vegetable broth, textured vegetable protein, maltodextrin, bullion cube, autolyzed yeast, protein isolates, smoke flavoring like those barbecued potato chips that people eat, gelatin, imitation soy sauce. So anyway, I just wanted to be, increase your awareness of all the different versions of MSG and the difference between MSG and glutamate. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.